Hi everyone, this is Trisha, and today I'm going to be doing another watercolor project for you. We're, today we're going to be using the WC structures. We're going to be using the little church, this cliff, and this rowing fence from the Easy Project B, the swaying palms from the WC tree set, the large foliage and the little grass from the foliage set, and these flowers from the Garden Wagon mini set. So let's get started. I'm going to take my watercolor paper and I'm going to stamp the church in the African violet because I want the church to be white. So when you want something to be white, you stamp it in this African violet. And I'm going to stamp it off because because the African violet tends to be very juicy and I want this church to be a little bit on the light side. So I'm going to take my scratch paper here and I'm, I'm, I'm going to stamp it off twice. I'm going to put the I'm going to put this on the cliff so I'm going to stamp this kind of in the corner here so I have room for my cliff. Right about there. I'm going to dip my brush some water and I'm going to pull the color out of the lines and I want this to remain not there not wicked light but just I don't want it to be too dark I'm going to pull this color right under here because this would be the darkest and out of the corners of these windows here. I don't want to pull too much color in because I, like I said I want this to be a white church but I do want it to have some ser some good shadows. So we'll pull it out of I'm going to imagine my light coming on this side I want to, everything that's going to be on this side is going to be dark. Under these eaves is going to be pretty dark. Okay. Now I'll pull some of this color out of here. This is going to be dark here behind this little opening and under here in the little door I don't want to color it in solid I want to leave some highlights and I want this to look white so I'm not going to be pulling too much color into into the white areas I just want the shadows And we'll go in and crisp up some of those things that kind of, some of those areas that got a little washed out, like this little window here, once that dries. Next, I'm going to take my positioner, because I want to put my cliff in here, but I'm really, I want to make sure it gets into the right spot. So I'm using my positioner, I'll put my stamp on my block, I'm using some sepia. I'm going to ink up the stamp without being too careful because I'm going to ink it up again. I'm going to stamp that right on my right here so that I can see where I'm going to want to put my water or my cliff. So now I'm going to ink up the stamp again. So I'm going to ink it up with a few different colors. I'm going to do the sepia on the top and on some of these little things that are coming down here on the rocks some of these areas when you use a few different colors it gives a nice variation I want this area to look like it's sandy but also rocky so I just want to be able to pull a few colors out of 
the background when I go to add the water. And I'm using this Tombow, so that I'm using two Tombows, the 947 and the 873. I really like these colors when I'm doing this project. When I'm doing sand or anything like that, I haven't found a Marvy marker that I like quite as much as I like the Tombows. So I will usually find a couple of these Tombow colors that I'll use instead of Marvy markers. Okay, so I'm going to position, I want to have my, I think I want my cliff right about there. So I'm going to put my little thing here. You can use the, the clear ones that Art Impressions sells, or this is just the Stampin' Majig that I've had for years from Stampin' Up. And then I'm just going to stamp this right here. Now what I want to do is I actually, I want to, I want to have this cliff, the bottom of this cliff, come out just a little bit more. So I'm going to clean off my stamp. I'm going to clean this side off with the rocks on this left hand side. I just want this this other half of the stamp. I think that's that's cleaned good. So I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm gonna put some of this color back on here. Some of this pinkish color and a little bit of this brown. It's really gonna make a nice look when I go to add the water. And then some more of the sepia on the top. I'm going to put my positioner back on. So what I've inked up is these two lines here. So I'm going to I'm just going to try to line this one up right about here. I really want this cliff to be kind of well, a little on the longer side. So maybe right about there. That'll just extend it out a little bit. Like that. Now I have an extra long cliff that this is going to sit on. I'm going to take my brush, dip it, dip it in the water, and I'm going to pull the color down towards the middle. Now, definitely don't want to color the whole thing in. I want to get a nice variation. So in between where these lines are, I'm going to pull on one side or the other of the line. That way, I'm leaving a little bit of white space in the middle of those lines. But it gives a nice variation in color and really defines this this cliff. I'm going to pull the color out of these rocks down here, which I'm going to add some blue when we put our water in. And the whites, leaving some white space is really going to give it a nice, a nice effect. So make sure you don't color it in completely. You don't need a ton of water, but you need you need some to to get this to really pop. See how we're just taking this and those different colors that we used on the stamp, you see how they just really give a nice color to this this little cliff here. And I'm pulling everything underneath. I'm not necessarily pulling in everything on top because I'm going to use some grasses up there so I don't want I really wanted to find this this as a cliff with a ledge which actually ends up being really nice I like a mixture of colors. I think it adds a lot to your paintings. Okay. 
Okay, so just pulling right outside of these. Going all the way down to the bottom of the picture, the the bottom of the paper. And see how that brown and that that peach, the Tombow markers, really gives a nice. It gives a nice. It's a nice color combination especially for when you're doing any kind of cliffs or anything like that. I'm going to put a little bit, I had taken a little bit off my marker. I'm just going to, I'm just going to add a little bit more down in here just to get a little bit darker. I want those creases to really look like they're coming out at you. I think it just adds so much to your paintings. But this cliff is probably one of my favorite to paint. I'm just going to soften those up so there's no harsh lines. Created a mask for our little church because I want to make the trees. I want to be set behind behind our little church. So I'm going to put our trees on our block. I'm going to ink these up with the olive green. And the sepia. I'm going to put one tree. I'm going to put it so it looks like it's on the cliff, but it's also next to the church. Put one there. Pick this up again. You could put this on your positioner if you really wanted to be if you really wanted to see exactly if you wanted a specific place for them to be. Um, just kind of winging it a little. And I'm gonna put one right behind the steeple here. I didn't re-ink that one because I wanted it to look a little bit lighter than the other ones. And then I'll take the mask off. And I'll take my brush and just soften, soften these up. I'm only going to soften a little bit up of the trunks. And I'm trying to be very light-handed because I don't want these trunks to get fat. I just want them to pop out a little bit more. So that's it. That's all I'm going to do with the trunks. And then the same thing with the trees as we always do. We're going to jump our brush around and just soften those lines. We don't need to be careful about being completely, color them in completely. We want to leave some white space. Okay, and then this one, this little guy right here. Those look pretty good. Next, I'm going to take my little my little grasses, my small grasses, and I'm going to fill in the back of this church with some grass. And I'm going to, so I stamp it, I'm going to use the olive green and I'm going to stamp it kind of like walking it out, but kind of using the clumps so they look a little bit higher back here and then they come right out to the edge of this cliff. I'm going to walk it right along this cliff like that and I don't need to make sure that it goes everywhere I just want it in a few places so 
so it looks like the cliff has some grass on top of it. And then I need some back here, back of our tree, and underneath these trees here. I'm going to put some right underneath the house. And I'm not going to put any underneath the church right now. I want to see, I think I'm going to put some flowers down there, so I don't necessarily want to put the green in there right now. I can always go back and add more, more grasses if I want to. And then I'm just going to pull the grass right out. And then pull from the bottom just to add some of the green to this area. I'm really going to pull this out far. I want it to look like it's overgrown. Wispy. Pull the grass right out here and then along this bottom here. and then out of these these little grasses here in the front of our cliff. Maybe pull some of that brown from the top of the cliff. Just like that. So I'll take our little flowers here I'm going to use some of the magenta. So I'm going to do this a couple ways. I'm not going to use the entire stamp. I'm just going to use portions of it. So I want to put a few in the background here and then a few along the, the bottom, but I don't want them to be really bushy. So I'm just going to ink up a few of these and then just stamp them in the background like that. I want them to look a little bit like they're wildflowers, just kind of growing near the church, kind of tropical. And then I can always add some grasses after back in now that I know where I want those little green, where I want those little flowers to be. And I'm just going to soften these up very, very lightly. Not too much water. Don't want a blob of color. All right. So now I'm going to move on and we're going to do the water down here. Actually, I'm going to grab the green. I'm going to add just a little bit of water, green down here for my palette. And I think that grounds that a little bit better. Now I'm going to take this this foliage here, and we're going to use some use this a little bit differently. I'm going to use it in the water. I want the water to look like it's rough, that it has some waves going on. So I'm going to actually just going to take this is the salvia blue, which is a really light blue. And I'm just going to ink a couple of spots on this on the stamp. And I'm going to try to make this look like 
there's some waves out here. So that it's not just a flat ocean. And I think I'll add a few down here. Just makes it look like it's Maybe there's, maybe it's a rocky ocean. Kind of like that. This is an experiment. I haven't done this before, so we'll see how it comes out. I think after we put the water on this, we'll come in with some darker blues and try to continue with this little rocky ocean. I'm using a lot of water. I'm not using a ton of water, but I am using quite a bit more than I usually do. Just to soften this up. And I definitely want to leave as much white as I can. Because that'll look like the heads of the of the waves. Alright. So I think we're going to move on to, I'm going to add some manganese blue to it now. And the same thing, I'm just going to kind of go around the edge of the stamp and then maybe in here a little bit to try to give it a little bit. Make sure, you, make sure it's very dry before you move on, otherwise it'll just smudge. I'm going to try to go upside down and see how we can what we can get for an effect. Kind of like that. I'm using my finger just to soften the line. I don't want a line that goes from the marker on the stamp. So let's try to see what we can create down here. Another color of blue is just going to give more dimension and really bring these waves out. And then we'll add some water to that. See what we get. I like that. I like the water coming right up there. Add some nice movement to the water. So what's great about these stamps, you can definitely do a lot of stuff if you stre you can stretch them in a lot of ways. You don't necessarily have to use a, tr you know, a brush. This is a bush. I'm using a bush to create some movement in water. I think I'm going to actually use it for the um, clouds as well. But if you, the more you can use your stamps to create these cool effects, I think it's just very cool. All right. Like I said, you want to make sure you don't color it in completely. Those white areas are really going to reinforce the effect of the foam on top of the waves. So one more color really getting into the waves here. I'm going to use the regular blue, number three blue, and we're going to do just a little bit more. All right, well, let's hope this doesn't ruin the whole project. <laughs> so I'm going to stamp it here, here, And I think under here, maybe here. Okay. 
Let's see, I could have masked this off, but I don't really mind it having some blue up here. It kind of looks like maybe the waves come up and touch this. I really want to soften these, these lines. So I'm using quite a bit of water. Really like how that looks. I'm just dabbing this. I'm not painting it on. I'm trying to soften a little bit of these hard edges. But I'm really just dabbing like we always do when we dab. I really like how that came out. Okay. And maybe we'll just do a little bit of blue. I'm going to I'm not going to clean off my stamp. I'm just going to leave it the way it was with that dark blue on there. I'm going to stamp it off. And I think I'm going to turn it upside down and just stamp a few clouds in here. Just like that. And then I'm just going to I'm going to use quite a bit of water. Just going to make it so it's not drenched. And then I'm just going to touch these Hopefully they'll make really cool looking clouds. I'm just softening that softening that marker up the water. And I actually like when it gets those hard edges up here. So I think if you look at, look at clouds in the sky, they do sometimes have hard edges. Just kind of dabbing my brush around. Trying to create some shapes in the sky. Okay. Just wanting to A couple more in here. I don't want those little lines showing. That's what I'm trying to fix right in here. I do want it to look like it's coming out just a little bit more in the background here. I'm fading it off. It just looks like there's some some clouds out here. Some Okay, so now I th I'm thinking that there's something that needs to be right here. So I'm going to take the, the the little bush that we used for our clouds and our and our 
C, and I'm going to make a little bush. I'm going to use half of this stamp here. And I'm just going to stamp a bush right about here. So it looks like it's in the foreground. I didn't want our little cliff to just look like it's hanging out there willy-nilly. So if we have a little tree here, it's going to complete that picture just a little bit better. And if you see, I'm kind of randomly just stamping it. I don't want it to be completely full. I'm probably going to end up cropping this off, but I don't want, I didn't want the scene to just look like it was floating in the middle of the picture, of the frame here. So I'm just going to come in here, soften these lines. Just to give the illusion that there's a tree in our foreground sets the sets the church back a little bit into the scene. I think really completes the picture. So now what I want to do is I'm going to add my roving fence to the front of my church. So what I want to do is I'm going to put it on my block and I'm going to ink it up with the mo this mocha color, which is a nice color, and I'm going to put it on my positioner because I want to make sure I get it exactly where I want it. So stamp it on my positioner and then I'm going to move it to see and I'm actually going to, I'm not going to use the whole thing. I'm going to use most of it. But I think I'm going to get rid of the front of this, this right here. And I want to make sure I really get that cleaned off well. I'm going to ink it up again. I'm going to move this exactly where I want it. This is about right there. That looks really good. And I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to add water to that at all. I like just the way it is. And I think that's about it. I think we're done. So I hope you enjoyed our project today. I'm just going to finish it off by signing and dating it. Thank you so much for joining me today in this little watercolor project. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks and have a great day.